Welcome, everyone. This is the uh, preview webinar for our new Quality Management Masterclass. And I'm thrilled to be today uh, with Ulrich Hennis, the founder of the Localization Institute and instructor uh, Ava Claudiniova. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, but welcome, everyone. Uh, just a few quick announcements before we get started. We're really thrilled with the, uh, the response that we're getting to this new masterclass. We've already sold nine of the 18 seats in our first class. Uh, the class begins on 24th. Uh, Ava has already gone ahead and we'll, we've scheduled the next uh, series of, of class dates so that when this first one sells out, we'll instantly reopen registration. But we do encourage you, if you want to take this class in August, uh, please register quickly because the seats are almost gone. So uh, at this time, it's my pleasure to turn it over to the founder of the Localization Institute, uh, Ulrich Hennis. Hi, Ulrich. How's it going? Hey. <clears throat> hi. Hi, Alex, and hi, Eva. Um, yeah, I'm Ulrich Hennis, the founder of the Localization Institute, and it's great to be here introducing a new masterclass. Um, when I founded the Localization Institute about 25 years ago, seminars like this here, usually face-to-face -face was what we mainly did until um, we started organizing Lock World. And then we got so busy and seminars became somewhat of an afterthought. So we are thankful, not really, but this is one of these, you know, effects of a crisis like the Corona COVID crisis that we had to get creative. And we remembered we used to do seminars and they were very popular. And so we launched master classes this year and we've been in talks. And in this case, they led to fruition. And I'm really thrilled to have a new master class on quality management with Eva Claudiniova. Uh, here's why. Um, I was actually talking, so uh, I'm not someone who tends, those, those of you who know me know that I do not tend to uh, hyperbole. Um, I'm really more a factual person. So on Monday, I was talking about uh, to a person about this new masterclass we're about to announce. And she was not really that familiar with our industry. So I had to translate in a way I said, well, you know, if we were in the movie, and this is, I'm quoting myself here, um, I said, if we were in the movie industry or in television, I would call Eva a star, um, one of the stars of the industry. I said, that is because she has been playing a leading role uh, in many, many productions. She was a professor in her native Slovakia. Um, she was a student that's maybe not so much a leading role, but she was a student at Monterey Institute. She went on on, a, on a, 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 an amazing career uh, with various uh, companies in the industry, lead, leading localization effort, culminating uh, with four years at Apple. Um, she is one of the three women who founded Women in localization is still very involved in leading that organization. And now Eva is a full professor at Monterey Institute and uh, sharing what she has learned in that career. And I'm really thrilled that uh, not everyone can go and spend many, many hours at you know getting a degree at uh, Monterey Institute, but Eva has so much to offer. So I at the Localization Institute, the, the producer at Localization Institute, I'm very thrilled that we're able to get her to play a leading role in our next production, which is called a masterclass in quality management. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Eva. Thank you so much, Ulrich, for the wonderful introduction. I really appreciate it. And um, let me jump straight into the presentation about the Quality Management Masterclass since our time today is limited and we want to make sure that there's enough time also for your questions in case you have any. So I'm going to share my screen. I prepare a few slides for you, but don't worry, this is not going to be death by PowerPoint. <laughs> in my case, it's Keynote because I have a Mac. Just a few things. Um, excuse me. Of these talking hats out of the way. All right. So the quality management masterclass preview webinar is about what you can expect from the class. So we've gotten the introductions out of the way, and then I would like to cover 
What's the ma who is the masterclass for? Why should you take the masterclass? What will you learn? And then I will be happy to take your questions. So I was just gonna have you read this, but now you don't have to because uh, Ulrich did a great introduction. So let's go straight into the masterclass. Who is it for? If you're on the buyer side and you're either leading a localization team or you're a quality manager or somebody who's just been asked to take care of quality and you don't know where to start, this is the class for you. But this is not just for buyers. This is also a class that's very useful for the providers of localization services because you're often asked to educate your clients and to help them build their own quality efforts. Sometimes the, uh, the whole quality effort is even outsourced to you. So learning how things work on the buyer side and how, what kind of strategy you need to build for your clients, this is something that you can learn at this class. But you might also be a technology provider that is building some kind of a quality tool or quality management tool. This is a class for you as well because you can learn how your clients think, what's important for them, what kind of strategy they need to put in place and what you need to have in your tool in order to support their quality management efforts. This class is not for the beginners. Uh, because it builds on a pre-existing knowledge of localization, of strategy, of program management. So the minimum experience is three years of project management and above, or a master's in localization management. And because of the strategic nature of the class, program level experience and above is preferred. So why should you take the master class? There's three main takeaways that you will take from this uh, class. Firstly, I approach everything from a business and strategic point of view. So you will learn how to create a comprehensive strategy, not just what you need to do now, but the strategy will help you figure out what's your three to five year, or, uh, five year plan that you need to put in place to manage quality strategically. I will teach you how to build successful quality programs and how to establish proper QA, QA management, and quality enablement processes. And we will get to quality enablement a little later. It's also about how to collaborate in the area of quality management. Oftentimes people misunderstand quality to be the sole responsibility of the vendor or the translators. That's actually not the case whatsoever. If you want to have successful quality efforts, you have to rely on very strong partnerships between the buyers and suppliers, between the localization team and their internal stakeholders. You need to uh, put metrics in place. You have to have quality improvement programs that encompass many different players in your processes. And you need to manage both acute and chronic quality issues. And then in the last module, we'll also focus on how to manage quality as a business function. If you've attended one of my previous uh, webinars, you might already know that quality is not just a linguistic function. It has to be approached as a business function. So you have to collect the right metrics. You have to automate the, the collection of these metrics. You have to automate the processes. You have to manage quality strategically and co collaborate with other business functions in the areas of quality management. And when you approach it from a business point of view, you can support the overarching objective of your company, which in most cases is to make money. But at the very end, you will walk away with a customizable playbook that I will share with you because I will be sharing all of my slides that will help you build a comprehensive quality management program that is designed specifically for the needs of your, cost, uh, of your company. So what will you learn? Let me go through, through this module by module. The first module will be introduction into quality management and quality enablement. And what you can see here, the reason that is so blurry and more opaque, it's on purpose because I don't want to give all of my secrets for, away for free. It's one of the things that we will be looking for, the evolution of quality in different companies. You will help identify which stage you're at and what you need to do to get to the next stage of quality maturity. We'll talk about quality enablement, 
which is a term that I borrowed from software development, actually. And that should be the holy grail of all of your quality management efforts. And then I will be, give you a framework for how to build a quality management strategy for your company or for your clients. In the second module or second session, we'll focus on how to build a quality assurance program. We'll start with differentiating QA between QA and testing and what kind of people you need to perform uh, each one of them correctly. And we'll go through different models of how to build a proper QA program. This is uh, an overview of the different four models, the advantages, disadvantages, and then you'll be able to make a decision based on what you know about each one of these programs. Uh, excuse me, um, each one of these models, you'll be able to design your own customized model that works for your company, your needs, um, your requirements and your particular business scenario. In the third session, we'll focus on quality issues and managing quality. We'll start with metrics or key performance indicators, KPIs. Um, and we'll focus on how to manage quality issues and how to implement different kinds of quality improvement processes. And the example you see here is a decision tree that you can use, you can teach your project manager to use, you can teach your uh, stakeholders that this is how um, quality issues will be approached from now on, the, a process that everybody can follow so that everything is transparent and everybody knows, okay, there's a quality issue, what are the next steps? The last session, as I've mentioned, is how to manage quality as a business function. We will cover different processes and models that you can implement to allow your company to produce the level of quality that's actually required by your end customers while saving time and money and using your available resources most effectively. And the example you can see on this slide is actually a three-dimensional um, three content map or quality model that I have developed in one of the companies that I've worked in to help uh, our business approach quality in the most strategic and in the most efficient way while still preserving quality and using our resources most efficiently. So these are the four sessions that we will go through. There is more detail that will of course be covered in every session. These are just a few examples that I wanted to share with you about what's coming and the basic points that we will be covering every week. So that's it from me. Thank you so much. Uh, let me stop sharing my slides. And uh, excellent timing, 10.15, exactly right on time. Thanks for that fantastic introduction to the course, Ava. And uh, we, do have, uh, we do have a question. Uh, Eric is wondering, uh, can you define quality enablement? Yes. So, um, as I've mentioned, I borrowed this term from software development. Quality enablement is basically not just retroactively uh, fixing issues once they've arrived. When you look at quality enablement, it's all about enabling everyone in the process to, to provide the best quality possible. And that enablement starts at the first step, which is actually creation of the source content. And then it goes through what the stakeholders need to do to provide the content to be localized to you, what tools you need to put in place, what processes you need to put in place, um, how you manage quality, how you do QA. So a lot of efforts that have to happen upstream and during the actual localization process to enable the highest possible quality. Because what most companies are doing at the moment is just spending a lot of money on retroactively fixing the issues after they've happened. And this uh, quality enablement is a strategic shift towards enabling the vendors to provide the best possible quality by putting tools and processes and different strategies in place to allow them to do so. Great, thank you. 
I don't have any other questions in the chat right now, but we have a, 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 a decent sized group here, but I think it would be all right. If you have a question for Ava right now, feel free to turn on your camera and your, your microphone and pose it yourself. Does anyone have a question? Hey, Eva. Hi, Cece. Hi there. Uh, Eva and I know each other for a while, and I really recommend any of her courses to everyone. I attended one of her class at this, and I think this is a great class as well. So my question is, Eva, I know that you teach uh, quality management as well at school. So you have a one semester program there. So I wonder which What's the difference between the two um, that you're both teaching? I guess there will be some overlap, but you might target two different groups. Yeah, yeah. Um, there is a lot of overlap, actually. Some of the basics I also teach in my courses. There's a few things that are in this class that are not in the classes for students because the audience is slightly different. So this is a little bit more high level. And I will be talking a little bit more about the business perspective, about the strategy, about dealing with the stakeholders, dealing with the management. But I would say there is maybe about 85 to 90 percent overlap. Got and there it. are also a couple of topics that I focus on with the students in a high level of detail that we'll only go through more quickly in this class because mm -hmm. people already have that underlying knowledge here. So it will mm -hmm. just be like a reminder. OK let's make sure we are all on the same page and let's take it to the next level. I see. Thanks for the info. We have a question from Joel who is wondering, will you be endorsing a product or products that need to be purchased or will you focus on building processes and tools in-house to gather metrics for KPIs, uh, access issues and manage quality in general? So I will not be endorsing any products. I might mention a few products that are in existence, but choosing a product is a highly specific decision that ha is completely driven by the company's business needs and business requirements, availability of budget, resources, and so on. So it's not something that I can recommend without doing a pro proper evaluation of your business case, of your requirements, and so on. Great. So it will be highly focused on processes, models, programs, building uh, strategies, uh, and so on. Great. And uh, I believe you mentioned before, but you'll you'll share your presentation slides with the students after each session so that they can go back and, and, and reference those, like, for instance, the graphs and such that you showed? Yeah. Great. Do we have any other questions for Ava? Yes, this is uh hi, nice to meet you. I don't know if my video is working. Doesn't look there like it. Oh, there we are. Yes. Hi. hi. Nice meeting you, Shannon. Nice meeting you too. Um, so I similarly am a graduate from the Monterey Institute, and I've been in the industry for for a couple of decades now. I don't want to date myself. Um, so I am quite knowledgeable in um, localization in general. I find myself on the buyer side now. Um, and we do have a fairly robust quality management program. However, I am curious to know it, from your presentation today, it sounds like you're, it's focused more on people who don't know where to start and who um, don't have already a strategy in place. Um, I'm trying to find out because our strategy is somewhat I should say very manual and you know I'm interested in in hearing kind of more efficient ways of capturing metrics and it sounds like maybe the last bit of the course is focused more on you know the automation but so I'm not sure if if like the first part of the course would would fit me because I we already have that strategy in place we already partner very very closely with our with our vendors um, to do that quality enablement up front like you mentioned earlier so just wanted to hear your thoughts mm -hmm. so let me unpack that because there are a few different things there um, yeah the first couple of uh, sessions will be focused more for people who are trying to build a scratch strategy either from scratch or there may be the, the team has been in place for three three to five years and they still have work to do the last two sessions are focused more on the mature uh, companies 
they are focused more towards quality enablement and uh, a high level of quality management. So I will kind of walk you through through those evolution stages so that people know where to start, but also where they need to go. What is the end goal, right? Um, if you are looking specifically for automation, I will not have the bandwidth to tell everybody, okay, this is the process, this is how you automate it. This is another process, this is how you automate it. We will cover all the processes that should be automated, but it would require a follow-up to, to look at your specific company's needs and figure out, okay, where, where you are, what are you doing, what are you missing, what maybe you need to change and how it can change. Does that answer so that would, the question? It would require a follow-up, is that? Yes. A, do you do follow-ups beyond uh, I, the end of the yes, class? I can. Okay. Yes, I can. Okay, great. Yeah, that's a great question, Ava. If if someone has a specific question about their own company, um, is that something that outside of the class sessions themselves that they could email and potentially connect with you or yes. at least ask for some advice? Yeah. Yeah, there will be one Q&A session, which we forgot to mention, mm -hmm. where anybody can bring their own questions and I will try to answer them to the best of my abilities. And then we can also, I will share my email address and then we can schedule a personal follow-up if, if that's something that you're interested in. Great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that question, Shannon. Does anyone else have a, a question? There is a question in the chat. Oh, yes. Um, How about I'll, I'll read it so you can answer it. Okay. <laughs> so it, uh, it's another question from Joel. Um, I know that the course can be reassigned to a coworker if needed, but can this be done midstream? I assume that uh, Joel, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're talking about uh, whether we you to transfer your registration to another person. Um, I would need to check with our team on that. Uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> it, we would not allow two of you to be in the same session at the same time, but I don't see a problem if, uh, you know, if, for instance, you were to attend session one and two and your colleague attended session three and four, but I think that's a question that we would need to ask uh, and also uh, uh, um, uh, Ulrich as well. So if it's all right, Joel, I, I will take that question offline and, and send you an email follow-up. Okay? Great. I have one note on that. Um, these sessions build on each other. So whoever attends the second part is not going to be easy. Sure. Because they will not have the background knowledge the from the first part. And my slides are not super wordy. They don't have every single detail spelled out right. that I will be covering. And that's so another just, reason. Just an F. Yeah. And that's another reason that, you know, we designed this course too, is it's, it's, it's relatively inexpensive. It's, it's a shorter time commitment. And so we would really encourage both members of your team to register, even if you can't, can't uh, come, but I will go ahead and get an answer for you offline too, Joel. Any other questions? Um, and I think there is actually a discount if three or more people in a team register Correct. from the same company. Right? Yeah. So, and I'll, I'll send that information to Joel as well. So other questions? There was a question for you, Alex and Ulrich. Uh, will the sessions be recorded for future reference as a video? Right, and uh, Ava, I don't believe that we've done this, but we actually, um, for our other master classes, uh, we are not recording the sessions. We want the sessions for one to be a safe space where people can ask uh, questions, for instance, about their own company without the fear that that something would get republished or or be out there as well. So um, I believe at this time we have no no plans to record the sessions, but we will offer the class several times. So if you miss it again in the first time, you can you can always uh, audit it. Uh, we in the past when someone has had like an emergency come up and they couldn't make it. I'll just be happy to invite you to join uh, that particular session the next time we offer the class. So, so not seeing any other questions, I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, Ava, thank you very much for a, a, a great intro presentation. I'm just so excited to start the class with you on August 24th. Again, uh, I see that we actually sold another seat while this was going on right now. So those seats are going. Uh, and then we will, once we sell out the first class, we'll announce dates for a second class as well. So 
Thank you everyone for your time today. You have a great rest of your day and uh, we'll republish the recording of this webinar uh, on the course page tomorrow in case you'd like it with your colleagues. So thank you everyone. Thank you everybody for joining Thanks, us today. Bye-bye. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye.